good day, everybody. Welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. Today's day number 25, and we're going to be coding up some sliding CSS3 panels. Let me show you what that looks like. Here we go, down in our final result. I basically just have an image, and when you hover over that image, bam, uh, an element slides into frame with some text. So this one's sliding from the top. When you, slide, when you hover back out, it slides back out of the frame. Sliding from the right, sliding from the bottom, and sliding from the left. So maybe already you have some ideas of how you might want to use this. The fact is, in CSS3, it's incredibly easy to code this up. Typically, you'd use a plugin or you'd write some JavaScript or jQuery to achieve this effect. But in CSS3, like I said, it's incredibly easy. It's slim and lightweight. And I want to show you how to do that right now. So up here in the sandbox, you'll see what we're going to be working with is an image with some text above that. And we're going to hide that text into an element. We're going to slide that in from the top, bottom, left, and right. Over here in our code editor, go ahead and download 25 sliding panels and get it queued up in your favorite code editor. And here in our index.html, let me just show you the markup so you're familiar. Here in the sandbox, we have a section with a level four heading that says slide from top. Um, that doesn't really matter. That's just telling you what each section will include. It's this element that matters to you right here. The div of the class of slide, and then slide top, right, bottom, and left, respectively. Within that div, we have a div of the class of slide content and some text, and then an image with the source of a placeholder image uh, that I pulled from placeimg.com. And that's a free placeholder website. You can use that for your own placeholders. I'm using that in this project. And again, you can put any image you want in there. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't even have to be an image. It can be content. So let's get started. Over here in our sandbox, let's start right from the top. We're going to say class of slide. We're going to go position relative, display inline block, and overflow hidden. That's because we want that element on the inside of a slide to be out of view when it's not within that frame. And now we're going to say slide and then image. We're going to say display inline block. This one's going to be vertical align middle. And that's going to align that image within the middle of the element. If you're uncertain about how a style works, whether in this video or any of the videos or just in your projects, take it out. Reverse engineer the, the, the work that you create. So if you don't know what this specific um, property does, then remove it and see how it affects the output and then add it back in, modify the values and see and experiment. That's how I learned as a web developer as I started building more and more projects. So, and that's how I encourage you to also learn how to understand CSS properties and values. Okay, vertical line middle. Now we're gonna jump in and uh, maybe let's just see what that looks like if it does anything. So over here in our final result, in the sandbox rather, you're going to see that it doesn't actually do anything so far because we're not telling it to do anything specific. We're not actually modifying it too much. So let's move on to the class of slide dash content. And we're gonna say position absolute because we're gonna move that content. The content is that pink box that's gonna slide in and out. And we're gonna say top, zero, left zero, right zero, and bottom zero. So it's so they're all anchored. So each side is anchored to every respective side, if that makes sense. Width 100%, height 100%. We just wanna make this expand to the full size of its parent element slide. And now what we wanna do is give it a Z index of one, so it's just in front of everything. We're going to use Flexbox here. Display Flex. Align items. This is a Flexbox property, Flexbox base property. So we're going to align the items center. Justify the content center. And then text align center. Just covering our bases here. Let's see what this looks like so far. Look at this. So this is what it's starting to look like. Uh, it's dead center. If I were to remove the last few uh, properties here, uh, maybe even if I took out display flex as well. So let me take all of this out. So there we go. You can't really see any change when I take out flex, but watch if I took flex out and tried align item center, it's not going to do that. It's not going to vertically align that. But if I go display flex, 
those, that align items is now going to work. Nice. I like it. Typically in the past, you'd have to make it uh, display table and then have another element within there that says display table cell and then vertical align middle. But this is way more lean using Flexbox and it's better. It's better to use Flexbox uh, rather than trying to go back to old school CSS uh, table technology. All right, especially because tables are used for data, whereas Flexbox is specifically for visual modification. All right, now let's keep going and I'm gonna say padding, I want pa uh, whoops, I want to stay in slide content. I want to give it a background color actually, I want to see, I want to see that uh, background pink color. So 225, comma, 35, 69, and 0 0.9, a little bit to see through. And then we're going to give it a padding of 20 pixels so that it doesn't over, so it doesn't go out into the edge of the parent. The text color to be white. And I want to give it a box size, box sizing, a border box because of that padding, I don't want to have it be 100% wide plus 20 pixels. I just want it to be 100% and the padding within it. I write transition, transform. 0 0.3 uh, seconds and then ease. So that's going to transition the transform property that we, that we, did we add transform property yet? No, but we will upon hover. So save that, let's check it out. So now we've got that style, it looks good. But now what I wanna do is hide it and then have it slide in when I hover. So let's make that happen. So now I'm going to say slide hover and then I want to say slide dash content. So now what I'm going to do is say transform, translate, and the translate value allows us to position where we want to see this animation. So zero and zero. Now what that means is upon hover, I want it to go to zero and zero. That's X and Y. But here, Let's say directions. Now what I want to do is say slide dash top and then slide dash content. So I'm specifically styling the slide top element here. And I'm going to say transform, translate. So this is by default. This is not on hover. I'm specifically targeting each, uh, each element now. I want to say translate zero and negative 100%. Save that. That's going to move it up 100% of its size, its height. So now, there we go. Slide from top. You don't see the element. You just see the image of the cat. Hover. Pew, slides down just like that. Why do we use translate? Because the animation is much more smooth. It goes by points of pixels, rather like fractions of pixels, rather than one pixel, two pixel, three pixel. And it's a lot smoother of an animation especially when you have like a retina screen and you have really high, uh, a really nice video card and all that sort of stuff. Uh, using translate is better for animations versus using position for animation. So maybe we can have a look at that. Let me make this animation go really, really slow. 10 seconds. Let's see what that does. So very, very smooth. I don't even see any clunks at all. Now, if I were to use, let's say, Instead of transforms, let's hide this and let's just use something like top negative 100%. And then if I go top, actually this will be negative 100% and this one will be zero. And take transition, let's go all. So I can already see chunks. You might not see it in the recording. I've got a retina screen um, and it's a really large monitor. So I can actually see, I can see the clunkiness. If you made this go slower, like really, really slow, something like 100 seconds, we're not going to wait that long, and then checked it out, you're literally going to see it go down in, you can actually see that. See how it's going down? It's just, it, that's what the animation is actually doing if you're using uh, top or the position, that position uh, property. So we're actually going to change this to, let's go back to translate and see if that actually makes a difference. And I'm going to uncomment these, remove this. Oh, this is actually transform. Okay, now let's check it out. Amazing difference. Proof is in the pudding right here. So you can now see how that is literally 
sliding down like liquid. Even if it's if it's a slow animation, maybe you're animating a scene of elements, like a background scene of clouds and a mountain and Mario running across the screen or something, you would use transform and translate because that's going to slowly smooth. It's going to be a smooth animation. Whereas when you use the top or bottom or left or right and use pixel values or percent value values, that's going to be a clunky animation. This is just sliding down just super smooth. So that is proof right there why you'd want to use transform translate for, or any other uh, proper translate 3d translate Y and all these sorts of things, these values um, for animations, because it's very clear the difference in the animation. So let's put that back to 0 0.3 seconds. Save that. Bam. It's just nice. Really liking this. Okay. So now all we got to do is just going to copy this, paste it a few more times, change the value from slide top to slide right, and then slide bottom and then slide left. And then you guessed it. All we're doing is changing these values. So slide top is fine. We want to change slide right to X value negative 100% and the Y value would be zero. And then if you wanted to slide bottom, we're going to do, um, and let's see here, we're going to go zero and 100%. And I was wrong here. So slide right is actually 100% that way to the right. And then bottom is 100% down. Slide left will be uh, negative. Let me see, negative 100% on the X and then zero on the Y. Save that. Let's see if all of these work now. We got slide from right, beautiful. Slide from bottom, perfect. Slide from left, awesome. Now, what if you wanted to slide from the top left, top right, bottom left, or the bottom right? You'd simply, let's just use one of these for example. Um, we're going to use just this one. I'm going to say 100% and negative 100%. Let's see what that does. That's the slide left. See how that's coming from the top left? That's what is happening there. You just have to change these translate values, the X and Y. I'm just gonna switch that back. And there we go, slide left, bottom, right, and top. There we go, there are sliding content panels with CSS3. These are incredibly useful. You can use them for displaying your services, portfolio pieces. Let's say you're showing a picture of your portfolio, and when you hover over it, content panel slides in, uh, displays the title, and a button to click here. Maybe you're displaying a product and you're selling something. The, the price comes in with the, the call to action to purchase. Whatever it is that you want to do using these sliding content panels, they're incredibly versatile. I highly recommend you use these in your own projects. And as you can see, the CSS is way, way, way easy. You don't need any plugins or any JavaScript or jQuery. Plain vanilla, straight up CSS3. So thanks for joining me today in day number 25. See you tomorrow. We're closing in on the home stretch here. Day 26 coming up. See you there. Bye now.